Why is titanium called a geopolitical metal? How to reduce the reliance on Avisma and Russia? In what way can Ukraine contribute to the interests of Europe and America? Welcome to the channel about titanium in Ukraine and the world, I'm Marherita Rivchichenko, and I greet you here. Today we will discuss an interesting geopolitical topic. Let's begin. In the previous episodes on our channel, you've had the opportunity to explore a lot of interesting insights about titanium in technical details. For example, what parts are made of this metal, its alloys and are simply irreplaceable in military equipment, weapons and aircraft. But titanium finds extensive applications beyond just the realms of the military and aerospace industries. Its significance extends into the field of medicine, where it plays an important role in producing nearly all implants and prostheses. Titanium holds great importance in the chemical industry, additive technologies, 3D printing, and numerous other areas. Titanium, known as the metal of the future, is indispensable for technological advancement and global development. Unfortunately, the world's reliance on Russia in this regard is undeniable. It just so happens, although I strongly believe it's not by chance, that both Russia and China stand as global leaders in titanium and titanium-related product supply, particularly in the aerospace sector. The VSMPO Avisma Corporation is the largest producer of this metal with a full cycle from processing raw materials to manufacturing final components. These final parts are forged at their facility located in Verknyaya Salda in the Urals. An interesting fact is that this plant was originally designed by the Ukrainian Titanium Institute, based in Zaporizhia. In general, the considerable contributions of Ukrainian developers, engineers, and scientists have played a significant role in the establishment and success of VSMPO Avisma. We will even make a separate episode about this, believe me, it will be interesting to find out what the Russians are hiding. But now let's get back to the present day of Avisma. It is officially part of the Rostec State Corporation. The same one that produces equipment, weapons and ammunition for the Russian army. Yes, it is a Visma that produces titanium for Russian submarines, airplanes, helicopters, and missiles calibers, X-101, 555, Iskanders and all the others. Without titanium, their existence and missile attacks on Ukraine would not have been possible. By the way, Sergei Kemazov, a former KGB officer and one of President Putin's closest confidants, serves as the head of Rostec, the overseeing body of Avisma. This fact further underscores the geopolitical significance of titanium as a strategic metal. Just think about it. Until recently, Avisma held almost 30% of the global titanium market. Their reach extended to more than 300 customers across 50 countries. with some customers heavily reliant on the Kremlin. For example, Brazil's manufacturer Ember sourced 100% of its titanium from Russia, a practice that continues to this day. Likewise, giants like Rolls-Royce and Bombardier exclusively relied on Avisma for their titanium needs. Even global aviation leaders Boeing and Airbus found themselves critically dependent. With Russian titanium comprising 60-65% to 65 of Airbus aircraft and nearly 40% in Boeing's case. And five years ago Boeing made a step further by establishing a joint venture with Avisma, known as Euro Boeing Manufacturing Russ, to produce titanium parts for their aircraft in Russia. To be more precise, it would be more accurate to say had manufactured for Boeing. After all, since the start of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the Americans abandoned Russian titanium, no matter how difficult or even critical it was. Boeing not only stopped buying parts from Russia, but also actually halted the use of the equipment to work with its joint venture with Avisma, Euro Boeing Manufacturing. 
The United States is well aware of both the critical importance of titanium and its critical reliance on Russia, actively mitigating it. While, unfortunately, I cannot say as much about Europe. While Boeing almost immediately refused to use titanium from Russia after the bloody February 2022, European Airbus did not do so for a long time. European businessmen and officials offered various justifications, asserting that the Kremlin's profits from this trade were not substantial enough to warrant affecting Putin's budget. It makes no sense to impose sanctions on Russia regarding titanium because it is a small business for them. We think sanctioning titanium from Russia would be sanctioning ourselves. In light of these statements, the European Union even opted to block a proposal for sanctions against VSMPO Avisma. According to reports from the Wall Street Journal, citing diplomatic sources, France, along with support from Germany and Spain, voiced their objections to the sanctions fearing that Russia might respond by cutting off the supply of titanium to the EU. This situation, occurring in mid-2022, indeed signaled a certain degree of weakness and dependence. It was indicative of the success achieved by the Kremlin, Putin, and Avisma in securing their objectives. Through aggressive market practices and the disruption of competitors, particularly in Ukraine, they had effectively established a global reliance on their titanium resources. Still, despite the challenges, a growing number of countries are realizing the problematic nature of this titanium dependency and the associated risk of geopolitical leverage. As I mentioned, American Boeing acted swiftly to halt the supply, while European Airbus initially resisted but eventually promised to stop buying titanium parts from Russia. As for titanium, we're in the process of breaking with Russia. It's a matter of months, not years. I can't give you an exact date. It's a complex process with certification and everything else that is needed in aviation, but it will happen. Ukraine is also doing its part. The supply of raw materials even through complicated schemes with intermediaries in third countries has long since ceased. By the way, this disruption has placed considerable pressure on Avisma, compelling them to seek alternative sources of ilmenite in regions such as Asia and elsewhere, which hasn't always brought successful results. Moreover, sanctions against Avisma were imposed by our government back in 21. The ongoing effort to encourage Europe and the United States to impose sanctions remains a relevant and important objective, and I hope that officials from relevant ministries and the President's office are actively engaged in pursuing this matter, ensuring that it has not been forgotten. Indeed, sanctions against the Russian titanium industry can be an effective means of depriving the Kremlin of money, depriving them of resources to manufacture, including titanium, used to produce military equipment, bombers and missiles used to attack Ukraine. In addition, it is time to dispel the false narrative declared by Russian propaganda that only they can provide Boeing and Airbus with titanium. Ukraine undoubtedly possesses the necessary resources, expertise, and production capabilities to replace Russia and play a significant role in the global titanium supply chain. We are one of the few countries in the world that also has production and technology Zaporizhia titanium and magnesium combined. We also have scientific breakthroughs, experience and specialists. It's true that such capabilities can indeed generate concerns for our neighbors, who may prefer to avoid having a competitive force. Titanium is a geopolitical metal. Does everyone in Ukraine realize this? What do people in the United States and Europe think about our titanium prospects? And how quickly will the industry recover after our victory? I spoke to Andrei Brodsky, the founder of the Ukrainian Titanium Industry Association, about this and many other things, the video is already on the channel. Subscribe to learn more about a lot of interesting things we want to tell you. See you soon!